start this video honoring the Canandaigua Academy Class of 2020, I want to take a moment to thank those who made this special day possible. Thank you to the Fuller family and the staff at Bristol Mountain. Your generosity made our commencement truly remarkable. Also, special thank you to Chris Tuttle at CMAC, the Canandaigua City Police Department, the Canandaigua City Fire Department, the Cheshire Fire Department, the City of Canandaigua, Canandaigua Emergency Squad, country singer Drew Baldridge, and all the staff and volunteers who dedicated countless hours in an effort to make this commencement something that our seniors and their families will always fondly remember. Thank you to everyone who made this possible. We truly are one community transforming lives. everyone. I know this is not how we pictured our commencement, and it is so easy to feel as if the current pandemic has overwhelmed what we have looked forward to for years. However, I do not want COVID-19 to overshadow what each and every one of us has worked so hard for. People are saying that it will define our class, that it will define our generation. I beg to differ. Yes, the past four months have put us into an unprecedented territory. However, the past four years have taught us so much more. There are so many lessons that come from our experience in this wonderful district, and I would like to share just a few of them. First, we know how to have a good time. Looking back, there are so many fun moments we experienced together. Thinking back to our pep rallies, we would always put together the best lip syncs. Even freshman year, the select few who put on their disco costumes represented our class with pride. We all smiled together at prom in our fancy outfits, dancing under the lights at FLCC. And those are just things we did collectively. I know everyone can think of a time in class where you laughed at something your teacher said, or the funny joke that the person sitting to your right made. I'll never forget the time in my 11th grade history class when Mr. Giuseppe was teaching us about life for early 20th century workers. Things got crazy when the chairs were arranged to replicate the tiny rooms of tenements and desktop desks were arranged like sweatshop stations. For nearly half a period, we moved around the room with sounds of factories, crying babies, and trains blasting through the speaker, speakers of the smart board. As funny as it was for us, I can hardly imagine what teachers and students in nearby rooms were thinking. Looking back even further, our class trips to DC or for our sixth grade camp were unforgettable. These might just seem like good memories, but they are so important. It is in times like these where a little laughter and a smile go such a long way, and our class knows how to generate that happiness. 
Beyond having fun, our class knows how to make an impact on the community. Nearly 70 of us joined our National Honor Society and performed acts of service, including organizing races and picking up trash. Students and volunteer organizations such as Key Club, Bigs and Littles, and Interact reach out to people all across Canandaigua. Our sports teams and music groups constantly engage with community members at games and performances, and students on our robotics team not only amaze people in Canandaigua, but across the country. Looking to the future, I am certain we will continue to impact whatever community we live in, because as Braves, that is just what we do. We will become nurses and teachers and scientists. We will join the military and save lives. And we will enter the workforce fully prepared. In these positions, we will all continue to change our towns and cities for the better. We have demonstrated that we care, and that will benefit not only ourselves, but our world. Finally, we are receptive to change. We look to the future for what we should do in the present. I believe this is one of the most defining factors of our class and our generation. I would like to thank our teachers for this. It is because of them that we know how to learn in a way that helps everyone. They have taught us everything we need to move forward and be successful, no matter what our next steps are. Our teachers have educated us so that when we enter the world, we will be able to implement creative and practical solutions to problems of government, of climate, and of anything else the world throws in our path. We will be accepting of everyone we meet, and that is something we should be proud of. It is true that the pandemic has changed our graduation, but it has not changed who we are. We are a class that is open-minded and cares deeply. We know how to bring smiles to our friends' faces. We can think critically and towards the future. We will contribute so much to our changing world, and no virus can ever take that away from us. Thank you for your time. Welcome, graduates, families, and friends, faculty, and staff. And on behalf of the Board of Education, congratulations to our beloved students. I'd like to begin by thanking the Fuller family for their generous support of the class of 2020. Thanks to the Fullers, on one spectacular day in June, Bristol Mountain, a local treasure, was all yours. I loved that ceremony, but I did miss the incredible feeling of watching our graduates walk toward me to accept their diplomas. I always get a lump in my throat, kind of like the feeling we get when we crouch to welcome our babies into our arms as they take their first steps toward us. It's a mix of deep pride and bittersweet recognition that a step toward us soon becomes a step away from us and the satisfying knowledge that that is exactly the way it should be. It's customary for me to express my gratitude to families at commencement. After all, the support of family, whether one by birth or adoption or choice, is life-changing. This year of all years, our deepest appreciation goes out to you. I saw a sign on a minivan that read, Teachers lied. My child is not a pleasure to have in class. Since Friday the 13th, you all rose to meet some pretty wild challenges, and our Braves families cemented their places as essential parts of our Braves family in grand fashion. To our faculty and staff, to say we appreciate you does not do it. To say we love you only scratches the surface of the depth of our gratitude. To say we admire the way in which you transformed your teaching and your communication and your craft at a moment's notice only begins to get there. Instead, I'll paraphrase the words of Carl Jung, who noted that curriculum is necessary, but humanity is vital for the soul of the child. Commencement is also a time of reckoning and reflection. The class of 2020, unlike many others, could be defined by the monumental bookends of your lives. After all, you were born in the shadow of the tragedy of 9-11, and you walked the stage, I mean, rode the chairlift, in the midst of a global pandemic. It would be so easy to let this define who you are, but you didn't. Long before masks, and before my father-in-law, as he calls it, room sessions began, this class distinguished itself in the greatest of realms, character. 
When some of you were in just first grade, you had a teacher who unbeknownst to you at the time was newly married to someone undergoing intensive radiation treatment and enduring the physically and spiritually exhausting side effects. This teacher says that you got her through this tough time. Your hugs and smiles and love gave her the energy and lift she needed every day. A few years later, her husband went on to coach some of you in soccer. And years later, as the couple began to raise three kids of their own, after using only grandparents for childcare, several of you have become their first non-family babysitters. Your six-year-old ability to put love in action made a difference in the lives of others. Some seven years later, many of you were lucky enough to have a lovely middle school teacher who was herself in the fight for her life. She shared her cancer battle with you and you became part of her recovery. We hope advisories will become little family units and this one did, but the entire class of 2020 responded when this teacher showed up in school with no hair. The cards you made for her are still under a box, in a box under her bed and this part of her story is the most moving. This teacher made thank you waffles for her advisory because she loved you so much. The plastic knife she used to unstick one of the waffles of course melted and in that moment so did the incredible strength she'd been putting forth. And so what did you do? You took the twisted knife, you signed it and you gave it to her as a joke Christmas ornament an ornament she hangs on her tree every single year. Love in action. Any year, any life can give us plenty to be mad or disappointed about or frustrated with. It takes depth of character and commitment to turn anger and frustration and dejection into something good, to recognize hurt and do something about it for good to process feelings and to then direct them positively. This is love in action. Making videos, sending notes of support, sharing a kind word, collecting food for others, standing up or kneeling for the rights of others, this is love in action. You all have done this quite naturally from a very young age and you continue to do it and you must continue to do it, now with greater purpose and under some difficult circumstances. And so, we honor you. Not because you're defined by what happened to you 18 years or 18 weeks ago, but because of the choices you've made every day in between. We celebrate you for your accomplishments in school and out of school. We hold hope in our future because you are a part of it. Class of 2020, may your lives be rich in love. May you always put love into action and may you always exhibit the depth of character that has defined you thus far. Congratulations. Warning. Any children left unattended after the, this event will be given a cup of coffee and sold to the marching band. Many of you know the nickname I coined for myself freshman year as the bass girl, but I'm pretty sure that's all some of you know me as. So I'm going to take a minute to introduce myself. My name is Hannah Nyan, and I am here to take you together on a trip for one last time as the Canandaigua Academy Class of 2020. Every single person I've spoken to about my senior year has told me this will be a year to remember. And yeah, they're not wrong. Not everybody can say they won the longest Senior Skip Day Award as they hadn't stepped foot into their school since March 12, 2020. Not everybody's musical got called off on opening night. Not everybody can say that when they said goodbye to friends and teachers alike before a long weekend, it was unknown to them that it would be the last time they ever saw each other as peers and students. 
But you know what, class of 2020? Our childhood television hero, Mr. Fred Rogers, once said, how many times have you noticed that it's the little quiet moments in the midst of life that seem to give the rest extra special meaning? In 10 years, when we're looking back on our memories of schooling, or when Sophie here is finishing up getting her PhD in every form of environmentalism known to man, we won't only think about how half of our senior year was unjustly swept from under our feet, no. We'll think about all the memories we made together without even realizing their importance at the moment. I'm going to pause for a second, and I'd like for you all friends, families, teachers, and students to close your eyes and imagine the best memory you have of your school career. Dwell on it for a moment. Relish the times of childhood innocence of the carefree life we once lived. Okay, ready? Go. If I bring up the memory you thought of, I'd love for you to give some form of acknowledgement, whether it be a smile, a laugh, a clap, or in our case, an emoji. Do you remember that first time we got to ride a big yellow school bus? It was almost terrifying. It felt like the butterflies in your stomach were going to eat through all the layers of you. You hopped on the bus, nearly tripping over that first big step. And when I say big, I mean it was like a mountain. You picked the most appealing spot on the bus and kicked the seat in front of you until whatever adult accompanied you made you stop. How about that time you finally got to move up to a new school? Whether it was a new district for some of us or that huge step from the elementary to middle school for others. It was finally a fresh start. You could completely recreate yourself. And I know I did. I'm sure you all remember the green-haired Hannah in a flower crown with cat whiskers drawn on her cheeks. I know I'll never forget her. But you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. She taught me to be unafraid to be myself, no matter what others think. Remember when you would spend what felt like hours flipping through textbooks to find the ugliest picture? and then turning to your best friend and whispering, it's you, before masking a fit of giggles from your social studies teacher. The panic that struck you when you had to tell your mom at 9 p.m. that you had a project due in the morning and you needed to buy construction paper and glue. Having your friend ask if you two could have a sleepover because your mom would say yes to them. And it working peeking at shoes during Heads Up 7-Up and the thrill of winning kickball at recess, getting ready for your first homecoming dance, winning your first sectional game, and so much more. So that makes me wonder, class of 2020, why are we rushing? We all know that no matter what happens after today, we won't be rushing out off into the world this year. There is anxiety, there is uncertainty, and there are laws that will prevent us from diving headfirst into adult life. And you know what? That's all okay. Because we can take these moments to reflect on our past, to slow down and really think all of our actions through before we do them. We live in a society where quantity is expected over quality where we push ourselves to do as much as we can without giving ourselves a break. I know I'm guilty of that myself. This is unknown to most of you, but I'm the one who created the pictures for senior shout out banners. I took this on because instead of appreciating the fact that I finally had a moment to breathe, a moment where I wasn't suffocating under loads of schoolwork and applications, I immediately tried to fill the empty time. I spent hours upon hours going through every senior's future plans and filling it out onto a spreadsheet and making edits upon edits of my fellow classmates and I never got the chance to breathe. 
I have a challenge for you, class of 2020. Take advantage of our unique situation and make the most out of the beautiful thing we have called life. Find your peace, plant a garden, strengthen your relationships, take that nap that you know you really need but you just feel like you don't deserve. In the wise words of Mr. Fred Rogers, our society is much more interested in information than wonder, in noise rather than silence. And I feel that we need a lot more wonder and a lot more silence in our lives. You deserve a breath, class of 2020. We made it. Thank you. Greetings, family, staff, faculty, friends, and of course, our graduates. To quote a famous song lyric, what a long, strange trip it has been. But despite the detours, the bumps, and all the obstacles, you did it. The class of 2020 might go down, actually, as the most resilient in recent memory. And trust me, resiliency will serve you well in life. Commencement marks a milestone, an achievement not arrived at individually, but arrived at collectively. Although this culminating ceremony, one that is certainly unique, has much to do with your hard work, students. However, in a lot of ways, it is even more special to those around you, those who supported and celebrated each step of the way. Whether it is your family, faculty, staff, or friends who have been there for you all along, graduation is a dream realized for them as well. You see, very little in life is truly arrived at alone, and it's important to always surround yourself with people who will be in your corner, supporting you, bringing out the best in you, and make certain that you are always doing what it takes to find success, even after you leave the halls of the academy. It can be said that you should never waste a good crisis. In essence, during times of change or adversity, always comes great opportunity. Not only are you in the midst of a crisis, you're also embarking on significant change in your life. Please look at this as an opportunity. For those of you who have always achieved and performed to your greatest ability, very well done. Be sure to continue that laser-like focus and work toward your goals. And don't forget to find the joys in life. Great things lie ahead and the secret to success remains the same. For those of you who went through school, just getting by, not sure what life has in store for you, now is the time to commit yourself to a better you. You deserve better and our society is depending on you. It is never too late to create a new you. You simply need to find your purpose and listen to a healthy support system. Find your we and make each other better. I wish you all the very best and please never forget, once a brave, always a brave. And we want to hear about your future success. Today is a celebration of an ending, and yet at the same time, it's a celebration of a beginning. As you close the chapter on your years as a Canandaigua Brave, know that you are prepared and capable of great things. And with this new beginning, affords you an opportunity to start over, to redefine your values and your goals. Use this opportunity to be better, to do better, and to make our society better. We need you. Hello everyone. I'm speaking to you as the winner of the prestigious superlative Worst Case of Senioritis. How does one achieve this, you may wonder? Speaking from years of experience, it takes dedication. A daily late pass to first period, not doing entire projects because they slipped your mind, and skipping last period to tan should get the job done. Underclassmen, if you are in the crowd listening, take notes. My fellow seniors can attest to this. The desire to enter that building begins to fade as we get older, or at least I thought it did. Everyone warns you how fast high school goes, how one day these will be the good old days. Everyone says, cherish these moments. But what happens when the short time you have in that building gets shorter? As a senior, I thought I outgrew the place, but in reality, I was not ready to grow up at all. I need to thank Canandaigua Academy while I'm up here. Thank you for giving me four amazing years. Thank you for giving me the best teachers who somehow put up with me and my bad scholarly habits. Shout out every math and science teacher I've ever had, whose classes I did the absolute least in. I was more into the social aspect of school. Thank you for giving me my best friends, but most importantly, thank you for each and every lesson you gave me and for making me the person I am today. It was hard for me to put into words how I feel about my senior year of high school, but here I am trying. 
trying to say that maybe everything really does happen for a reason. Maybe the reason this happened is because we would not be able to say goodbye. We would not have known how to walk those halls one last time, drive away from that last game, pull out of our parking spots, or take that last test. You start to take things for granted when you assume they will not ever go away. The sudden loss of it hurts, but it also makes you appreciate it so much more. It makes you think about when you used to count the minutes till you could leave, or be angry about having to stay after school. It gives you realization that maybe it was not that bad after all, because with those awful long classes you sat next to your best friend, and when you stayed after school you formed a relationship with that special teacher who you could go to anything for. I remember in April making deals with myself, like if Governor Cuomo lets us go back to school, I will never be late again, or stop taking my weekly mental health days. It was an awful feeling thinking I would never see a pink late pass. In all seriousness, high school is unlike any other place in the world. It is where boys and girls become men and women. You see people change right in front of your eyes. Four years you have, make the absolute most of them. To my class, I am here to say congratulations. We did it. You see, for us, we assumed we would see each other that following Monday. For us, we did not know it would all be over so fast. For us, on that Thursday in March, and quoting the wise words of Winnie the Pooh, it was not goodbye, it was only see you later. Starting a speech as one such as this is quite possibly one of the most challenging things I have ever done as a student here at Canandaigua Academy. I have always dreamt of being able to climb the stage at CMAC, laden in cap and gown, and present a graduation speech full of reminiscence and utmost joy to my classmates. I was fully expecting my speech to begin with a joke that would make the audience laugh to calm my nerves. While I may be presenting this speech at CMAC stage, unfortunately, any joke would fall on absent ears. Reality is, for all of us, that we are sitting at home trying our best to quell our social needs through texts, Zoom meetings, and FaceTime calls. We are also simultaneously studying for AP exams, completing mountains of homework, and desperately trying to make the comfort of our bed a viable classroom. We never thought this is how our chapter at Canandaigua would end. As a class, we've been told that our senior year is the most memorable, to soak in every last minute of it. We don't have those minutes anymore. Most of us have spent 13 years at the school writing our stories, only to have the final chapter unpublished. A book without an ending feels forgotten. I've been struggling immensely with the thought that my last chapter at Canandaigua Academy is to go unfinished. I feel like we've been climbing a mountain, the journey long, vigorous, and at times really difficult. We were almost to the top, and at the last minute we were pushed down the mountainside, never knowing what the view from the top looked like. Most of the time, I just feel like sitting in bed, wallowing in the pain that I'll no never fully get that experience ever in my life. Our whole lives have been leading up to our senior year. How can we not look at this with tears in our eyes? But, despite everything, I still wake up every morning, and every morning I pull myself out of bed, no matter how impossible that may feel. I believe that the only reason I've been able to pull myself out of bed each morning is knowing that the journey up that mountain came with so many memories that I will cherish forever. And I knew the minute that I started writing this speech, it needed to be about the journey of the class of 2020, not its abrupt end. We cannot forget what shaped us to be who we are right now. Canandaigua's motto is four words, one community transforming lives. I feel that these words ring true. This community has transformed our lives. Class of 2020, your teachers, peers, parents, and everyone around you have been molding us into the people we are today. We have upheld traditions together, made memories together, and accomplished outrageous stuff together. But out of everything, we have come out on top as a family, and I feel that isn't something every school can claim they have. No matter what corner of the boxing ring we come from, we hold each other up so we can stand on mountains, so we could make that difficult journey together. A memory of the school will remind us of that every day. Don't believe me? Just take a glance at our carbon footprint at CA. What football team won the Section 5 Class A Championship this year for the first time since 2007? And what football team went all the way to Syracuse to play their hearts out in the Class A semifinals? We did. What school is known for having one of the loudest, biggest, and most supportive student sections at football games? We do. It's called the Red Sea. What cheer team went to every game and proved to the other team that they were no match for Canandaigua? Ours did. We were Division II county champions. 
and what pep band traveled to every football game, planned at every halftime show, and played stand up and cheer as loud as they could to tell the world that our boys in red scored a touchdown. We did. We're the sound. And every time our national anthem was sung across any stadium, we all joined in unison at the very end, shouting Braves at the top of our lungs. Because that is who we are. We are the one and only CA Braves. Our sports teams and our music ensembles are undoubtedly the best in any high school. I may be a bit biased. No matter what team you have, may have ever been on, football, lacrosse, baseball, softball, cheerleading, tennis, track, cross country, soccer, swimming, golf, hockey, ultimate frisbee, volleyball, wrestling, basketball, bowling. You wore your cherry and gray uniforms with pride. No matter what ensembles you were in, you played or sang your hearts out for everyone around you to hear. At Canandaigua, our music program kicks butt. We have wind ensemble, chamber orchestra, symphonic band, symphony orchestra, mixed choir and treble choir, jazz and magical choir, jazz one and new jazz band, sound, marching band, and a full-fledged theater program. You cannot tell me for one minute that we aren't serious musicians here at Canandaigua. We pour our hearts into song every day. Oh, and did I mention that our Mads and Jazz choirs went to New York City and performed at Carnica Hall with one of the most possibly famous composers in the world, Eric Whitaker? Yeah, I didn't think so. I want to remind you all of a few words from our timeless fight song. They go as follows. Stand up and cheer, stand up and cheer for Canandaigua. I read these lyrics to all of you to remind you of something. Stand up, class of 2020. Stand up and applaud yourself for all of the accomplishments you have made throughout your high school career. Applaud yourself for all of the exams you've taken, all of the games you've won. Applaud yourself for all of the concerts and musicals you've given to your community, and for all of the hard work you've put into those behind the scenes. When you stand up and cheer, cheer for yourselves. Cheer for the memories we have made, and cheer for the time we spent together stuck in classroom walls. Remember the pep rallies and the football games. Remember your homecomings, your parades, and all of your school dances. Remember your freshman orientation, your spring flings, and your class assemblies. Remember the time our senior sunrise was rained out horribly, and remember the end of an era on Evans Field. But don't push those little memories you may have to the side, either. Remember walking through the halls between classes, and remember all the times you grumbled about having to change for gym class. Don't forget about your few all-nighters or your daily trivia questions in bio class. Remember all the times you've listened to the announcements before fourth period or had to sit through a lunch or study hall in the noisy cafeteria. Remember all the times we accidentally set off the fire alarms in the winter or all the times we got to throw paper balls at our English teachers. I mean, how could we even forget the memories from elementary school, like playing on the playground or being physically stuck in a trash can by your fourth grade teacher? some people, memories like these may seem like the filler pages in our story here at CA, but they are quite possibly some of the most valuable moments in our hearts. That is what makes this place so near and dear to us. The time we spent here together shaped us into the people we will continue to be for the rest of our lives. Even though we aren't able to walk across the stage here at CMAC, Canandaigua still built us into the successful people we are. CA made sure we are ready for the world beyond. So class of 2020, thank Canandaigua. Thank it for everything it has given us and all it has gifted to us to help us grow. We will forever be in debt to this school. This was our first home and our first family. And now it's finally time we say goodbye. Today I have the honor of presenting the John Wilcox Award, which is given each year to a deserving staff member who exemplifies the character and values Mr. Wilcox displayed while serving the Canandaigua City School District. Mr. Wilcox, Academy Principal from 1967 to 1986, led by example, holding himself to both high standards and a lofty personal code of conduct. The school's foundation around character education was near and dear to him and how he led. Success can be achieved partly through patient and persistent and gentle support. This support can come in the form of family or friends, but it also comes in the form of adults working in our school. This is why Mr. Wilcox believed that to raise children properly, it actually does take a whole village. Mr. Wilcox always put students first. He honored their individuality and celebrated their successes. 
He believed that students and families must know that the staff cares about them and all the students can succeed. Mr. Wilcox understood that students thrive when structure, rules, and discipline are consistent and evident, regardless of who a person is. Hard work was the hallmark of success, and he exemplified it and committed to our school system and our community. Mr. Wilcox passed away in December of 2008, and at that time, the Canandaigua City School District established this, their most prestigious award for staff. The award winner receives an original painting this year created by senior Samantha Baxter. It is a beautiful depiction of our beloved Main Street right here in the city of Canandaigua. The winner must be nominated by his or her peers and ultimately selected by a confidential committee of school employees. But above all, the winner must exemplify the traits which Mr. Wilcox valued and this year's winner clearly exhibits all of these traits. In the nomination form for this year's winner, our recipient was defined as one of the most caring, patient, approachable, and kind professionals on our staff. Think about those traits. Caring, patient, approachable, and kind. These are critical traits in the field of education for making a lasting impact on the lives of students. I'd also argue they are critical traits for members of society to possess as well. We need more people to show kindness to one another, to be more caring for each other, and to help those in need through patience and connectivity. Helping someone in need is the foundation of this recipient's job, and he is constantly there for students, staff, parents, and community members every single day. The pressure of this individual's job is intense, and the demands never let up. However, this individual displays a positive attitude and a can-do-it spirit every single day. The spirit is both contagious and it sends a strong message to everyone he encounters, thus sets a tone and establishes a culture within the building which he leads. This individual upholds a tremendous amount of integrity and can handle even the most challenging of situations with an eye on doing what is best for children, both in the building and in the greater community. We purposely set out to create stability and consistency in leadership at our primary elementary school this year, as this year's recipient has been stretched so thin for far too long. And although many curveballs were thrown his way again this year, he handled the twists and turns with grace, patience, and positivity yet again, taking on added responsibilities. He knew it was what was needed and never thought twice about it. I'd like to add the word sacrifice to the list of traits this person displays as well. The hours he puts into his work is admirable. He arrives early and stays late and can be found on campus most weekends, still working, despite having a young family of his own. One of the most obvious traits this year's recipient has may seem minor to some, but is major from my perspective. And in fact, I was able to say this about last year's recipient too, so maybe there is something to it. He is always smiling, always. Everyone he greets, everyone he works with, everyone who encounters him is welcomed with a smile. A smile says so much about a person, but it does so much more for others. A smile makes him feel cared for, appreciated, and welcomed in his presence. If we can all do more to be like this year's recipient, it would be to spread kindness, make time for one another, and to smile more often. The recipient of this award is an integral member of our faculty, a consummate professional, and a proud member of the Braves family. It was a thrill to surprise this year's recipient with this wonderful award. It is with honor to announce our 2020 John Wilcox Award winner as none other than elementary school principal, Mr. Brian Amesbury. On behalf of our community, thank you, Mr. Amesbury. Greetings and salutations. Congratulations goes out to you, the 296 Brave graduates. You weathered a global pandemic, challenges of the unknown and known, academic requirements, and a school schedule that seemed to move a lot. And even the sale of the academy, which by the way, I tried to buy, but was turned down. March through June certainly zoomed for all of us. I'm incredibly proud of you. Your senior year was unlike any other in the long history of Canada Igloo Academy. As you begin your life beyond CA, I ask that you never forget how the community, 
your teachers, your families, and your friends literally moved mountains to provide you with a fitting celebration at Bristol. The world we knew in September has most likely changed forever. Coronavirus inter interrupted much more than your senior year. This experience and how you responded as an individual and as a collective group has taught us many, many lessons. As you look back at these events, it is of the utmost importance to know and acknowledge they have had an indelible impact on who you and we are. We have learned so much. Let us continue to live a life full of meaning, purpose, and passion. And above all else, let's continue to grow and learn. As we look back, I cannot help but see a key theme to life. Our individual choices and actions have impacts on others. The words we use have meaning. Our behaviors impact those around us. And what we post lasts forever. As you look to your future, your decisions, and your actions during challenging and normal times will loudly communicate who you are. It is of the utmost importance, now more than ever before, to be kind to others, to stand for those who might be standing alone, and act with dignity and compassion for all. I implore you, as the 132nd graduating class of Canandaigua Academy, be brave, be strong, and be smart.